Hmm. Hey, can you type something for me? Sure thing. What even is that? To be honest, I'm not quite sure. This, my friend, is a proper typing keyboard. Oh, wow. How boring. Can your keyboard do this? Huh. Mine's smaller. All the important stuff. Whatever, guys. At least mine looks good. Huh. So all of these keyboards look pretty unique for either gaming, typing, or mobility. Let's check them out after this. Looking for a solid board to pair your 9th gen CPU? The ASRock Z390 Tai Chi gets it right with robust VRM designs for extreme overclocking, a 12 phase power design for smooth power delivery, dual band Wi Fi, 3 M.2 slots, and reinforced PCI connectors. Learn more about it down below. All right, so everything you'll see today will be linked in the description below. Thank you very much. All right, so let's begin with something totally different an ergonomic typing keyboard from a company, Exbose. Mine arrived with the MX Brown switches and a fantastic rubber wrist rest that I now use for all my other keyboards every day. It connects via USB type C, which is a surprise and has a metal backplate on top of a plastic body. Now, interestingly, everything about this layout is kind of bizarre with non-standard key sizes like the giant backspace and alt keys, broken up space bar for both your thumbs, tiny shift key on the sides and additional backspace, enter control and shift keys sandwiched right between that angular shift for the midsection. The purpose here is to provide uninterrupted typing for both of your hands at a more ergonomic level than your typical keyboard uh, because the key columns flare into the middle. At first, it was super odd and awkward placing my hands on the keyboard and not knowing where the keys are. And I was training myself for two weeks trying to get accustomed to it, build new muscle memory and finger memory, knowing where the keys are. But it's been quite difficult. And in the beginning, I was making so many spelling errors and I still do. One particular annoyance for me is how the spacing between the keys increases for the upper keys, making it more difficult to actually recognize the full layout. And this is the first time I'm trying something like it, an ergonomic keyboard. Some typists based on reviews love it and some find it extremely uncomfortable. And I'm in that second camp. The driver software feels outdated, but I'm a big fan of their RGB implementation. And also because of that tiny shift key and caps lock, etc., on the left side, gaming on this keyboard is out of question. Now, speaking of keyboards you cannot game with, I found this portable, foldable Bluetooth keyboard that is actually quite fascinating if you need some basic typing and navigation. So it folds into a compact and protected package with over 500 hours of standby time. I wouldn't use this for every day, but the layout is actually not horrible given the uh, fold breaks the keyboard flow. I wish all the keys were the same size, like D, F, T, V are especially annoying with a thinner profile, but if you need to carry a tiny keyboard someplace, it's actually pretty good. It connects to my iPhone, my Android phones, but honestly, I'm faster typing on the phone itself, while for a Windows machine, given we have a tiny trackpad that's actually better than some notebook ones, the keyboard is awesome to use uh, with hard reach computer spaces or simple control of your HTPC. It is a highly niche product, of course, but it's not too expensive at only $30. And moving on to something for gaming, we have this interesting keyboard from Rockat, the Vulcan 120 AMO. If you like full-size layouts and desk area is not a concern, it's a cool option. And the reason it's on my list are twofold, Rockat's own Titan mechanical switches and the overall board design. So first, the Titan switches, uh, this is becoming my favorite brown switch with a tactile point at 1.8 millimeters, with total travel distance of 3.6 and they also love the bounce back and the weight. The half high keycaps add a slim factor to such a massive keyboard that I appreciate, but more importantly, they don't cover any of the illumination. And unlike what Cooler Master did with the totally flat surface of slim keycaps, uh, on the Vulcan, they're slightly curved and angled by row bases, so fingers fold naturally into place. And the stem, by the way, is MX based, so if you wish, you can swap some out. As for the design, the clear switch base look fantastic with any hint of illumination, and that aluminum base plate adds some texture. The volume wheel is awesome and can be programmed to something else useful. And for macro lovers, you can utilize the Easy Shift Plus feature to activate that second layer of commands on shortcuts that I find incredibly useful for my editing workflow. The magnetic wrist rest is okay. It's just a plastic piece. And if a TKL version was available that was slightly slimmer, it would have my name on it, totally would go on my desk. Which brings me to my next unique pick, a hybrid key 
keyboard from Asus, the ROG Claymore, following in the legendary footsteps of the Sidewinder X6 by Microsoft. Now the Claymore is from 2017 and I'm honestly quite surprised we haven't seen any more similar keyboards. So what you can do here is detach that numpad area from the right and turn this into your standard TKL layout without any compromises. But you can also attach the numpad section to the left of the keyboard, thus giving you that full size keyboard shortcuts and all the keys, but clearing up that area on the right for mouse movement. It's an awesome hybrid approach. The frame is as compact as possible, thus there are no dedicated media controls outside of the volume dial above the numpad section. And we also have these rubber grommets to cover the side connectors when they're not in use. And the only reason why this thing has kind of like slid under our radar since 2017 is the price. It's hella pricey and especially for 20... So the price, yes, it is hella pricey, especially for 2019 standards. Uh, and that, I guess, comes with that hybrid premium. And moving on to the last unique pick, we have the Razer Tartarus V2 gamepad. Now, I actually did a full video on this guy recently, but the idea of a smaller gaming keypad that is more ergonomic is just awesome. And I wish we had more of them on the market. You can use them for macros within professional applications or in gaming as what they're designed for. And the Tartarus V2 raises your wrist and relieves some finger fatigue and placing it closer to the body lets the elbow rest and it opens up a lot of the area for mouse movement where normally your keyboard would be. It does not replace your keyboard but might complement your work or gaming style if you're willing to pay full price of a normal keyboard for this half-sized product. Get a good sense of grip with Corsair's Iron Claw RGB gaming mouse featuring a lightweight design, ultra durable Omron switches paired with Pixar's 3391 optical sensor and some RGB lighting for some extra flair, the Iron Claw ensures gaming at its best. Check it out down below. All right, so if you've seen any interesting or unique keyboards on the market, let us know in the comments. I would love to try something new. Going with the ergonomic keyboard for the first time, I thought that the awkward stage would pass as I train my fingers and sort of start to realize where the keys are, but that didn't really emerge into anything. And I'm quite impressed with the Rollcut Vulcan uh, for the design and the key switches, the Titan switchers are awesome. But if only they made a TKL version because the full size with that extension on the frame is a bit too big for my style. But guys, I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Uh, make sure to check out this other relevant content, subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next video.